on with 1 Nephi chapter 15. Lehi's seed are about to receive the gospel from the Gentiles in the latter days. The gathering of Israel is likened unto an olive tree whose natural branches will be grafted in again. Nephi interprets the vision of the tree of life and speaks of the justice of God in dividing the wicked from the righteous, about 600 to 592 B.C., or before Christ. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been carried away in the spirit, and seen all these things, I returned to the tent of my father. And it came to pass that I beheld with my brethren, and they were disputing one with another concerning the things which my father had spoken unto them. For he truly spake many great things unto them, which were hard to be understood, save a man should inquire of the divine, and they being hard in their hearts, therefore they did not look unto the divine as they ought to have. And now I, Nehi, was grieved because of the hardened of their hearts, and also because of the things which I had seen and knew they must unavoidably come to pass because of the great wickedness of the children of men. And it came to pass that I was overcome because of my afflictions, for I considered that mine afflictions were great above all because of the destruction of my people, for I had beheld their fall. And it came to pass that after I had received the strength, I spake unto my brethren, desiring to know of them the cause of their disputations. And they said, Because we cannot understand the words which our Father hath spoken concerning the natural branches of the olive tree, and concerning the Gentiles. And I said unto them, Have ye inquired of the divine? And they said unto me, We have not, for the divine maketh no such thing known unto us. Behold, I said unto them, How is it that ye do not keep the commandments of the divine? How is it that ye will perish because of the hardness of your hearts? Do ye not remember the things which the divine hath said? If ye will not harden your hearts and ask me in faith, believing that ye shall receive with diligence in keeping of my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. Behold, I say unto you, that the house of Israel was compared unto an olive tree by the Spirit of the divine, which was in our father, and behold, we were not broken off from the house of Israel or mother, and we were not a branch of the house of Israel. And now the thing which our divinity meaneth concerning the grafting in of the natural branches through the fullness of the Gentiles is that in the later days when our seed shall have dwindled in unbelief. Yea, for the space of many years and many generations after the Messiah shall be manifested in the body unto the children of men. And then shall the fullness of the gospel of the Messiah come unto the Gentiles and from the Gentiles unto the remnant of the seed. And it at that day shall the remnant of the seed know that they are of the house of Israel, and that they are the covenant people of the divine, and then shall they know and come to the knowledge of their forefathers and foremothers of the gospel of their Redeemer, which was ministered unto their fathers and mothers by the divine, wherefore they shall come to the knowledge of their Redeemer and the very points of the doctrine that they may know how to come unto and be saved. And then at that day will they not rejoice and give praise unto their everlasting God, their rock and their salvation. Yea, at that day will they not receive the strength and nourishment from the true vine? Yea, will they not come unto the true fold of God? Behold, I say unto you, yea, they shall be remembered again among the house of Israel. They shall be grafted in being a natural branch of the olive tree into the true olive tree. And this is what the divine meaneth, and meaneth that it will not come to pass until after they are scattered by the Gentiles, and meaneth that it shall come by the way of the Gentiles, that the divine may show the power unto the Gentiles for the very cause that shall be rejected of the Jews or the house of Israel. 
Wherefore our divine hath not spoken of the seed alone, but also of all the house of Israel, pointing to the covenant which should be fulfilled in the latter days, which the covenant of the divine made unto the father Abraham, say, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake much unto them concerning these things. Yea, I spake unto them concerning the restoration of the Jews in the latter days. And I did rehearse unto them the words of Isaiah, who spake concerning the restoration of the Jews or of the house of Israel. And after they were restored, they should no more be confounded. Neither should they be scattered again. And it came to pass that I did speak many words unto my brethren, that they were pacified and did humble themselves before the divine. And it came to pass that they did speak unto me again, saying, What meaneth this thing which our divine saw in a dream? What meaneth the tree which was seen? And I said unto them, It was the representation and is the representation of the tree of life. And they said unto me, What meaneth the rod of iron which the divine saw and led to the tree? And I said unto them that it was the word of God, and whoso would hearken the word of God would hold fast unto it, they would never perish. Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them unto blindness, to lead them away to destruction. Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed unto the word of the divine. Yea, I did exhort them with all the energies of my soul, and with all the faculties which I possess, that they would give heed to the word of the divine God, and remember to keep the commandments always in all things. And they said unto me, What meaneth the river of water which the divine saw? And I said unto them that the water which my divinity saw was filthiness of the water. And I said unto them that it was an awful gulf which separated the wicked from the tree of life and also from the saints of God. And I said unto them that it was a representation of that awful hell which the angel said unto me was prepared for the wicked. And I said unto them that the divine also saw the justice of God did also divide the wicked from the righteous. And the brightness thereof was like unto the brightness of a flaming fire, which ascendeth up unto, unto God for ever and ever, and hath no end. And they said unto me, Doth this thing mean the torment of the body in the days of prohibition, or doth it mean the final state of the soul after death of the temporal body, or doth it speak? of the things which are temporal. And it came to pass that I said unto them that it was representation of things both temporal and spiritual. For the day should come that they must be judged of their works, yea, even the works which were done by the temporal body in the days of their probation. Wherefore, if they should die in their wickedness, they must be cast off, also, as to the things which are spiritual, which are pertaining to righteousness, wherefore they must be brought to stand before God to be judged of their works, and if their works have been filthiness, they must needs be filthy, and if they be filthy, it must needs be that they cannot dwell within the kingdom of God. If so, the kingdom of God would be considered filthy also. But behold, I say unto you, the kingdom of God is not filthy, and there cannot be any unclean thing enter into the kingdom of God. Wherefore, there must needs be place of filthiness prepared for that which is filthy. And there is a place prepared, yea, even that awful hell of which I have spoken, and the devil is the preparatory perpetrator of it, wherefore the final state of the souls of men is to dwell in the kingdom of God, or to be cast out because of the justice of which I have spoken. Wherefore the wicked are rejected from the righteous, and also from the tree of life, whose fruit is most precious and most desirable above all other fruits, yea, 
It is the greatest of all the gifts of God, and thus I spake unto my brethren. Amen. In review of that, I, I had that dream pre-head injury. It really was a nightmare that nobody wanted to listen to me because I was a child and that was before I had a dream on Palm Sunday in 2000. And I warned people of a lot of aspects when it came to the treatment of not just military and law enforcement, fire department and EMS, but even of the dependence of. And that was before my head injury. After my head injury, I was just repeating myself. I mean, for example, the way Yvonne had cheated on my biological mother's brother when he was in Desert Storm. Desert Storm wasn't that long, especially in comparison. And my head injury, the subarachnoid hemorrhage, was in the front temporal lobe of my brain. One Nephi chapter 16. The wicked take the truth to be hard. Lehi's son Mary, the daughters of Ishmael. The Lehona guides their course in the wilderness. Messages from the divine are written on the Lehona from time to time. Ishmael dies, his family murmurs because of the afflictions. About 600 to 592 BC before Christ. for my Sweet Sixteen slash Bon Voyage party, which was held at Neff Chapel of Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, which I was made fun of at St. John Vianney High School for. And then there were people at the church who were upset because my biological parents would only allow a certain number of people to attend because Patricia's friends had to be able to attend her part of the party as well, instead of it simply being my Sweet Sixteen party and then having a Bon Voyage party afterwards. And now it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had made an end of speaking to my brethren, behold, they said unto me, Thou hast declared unto us hard things more than we are able to bear. And it came to pass that I said unto them that I knew that I had spoken hard things against the wicked, according to the truth, and the righteous that as I have justified and testified that they should be lifted up at the last day. Wherefore the guilty taketh the truth to be hard, for it cutteth them to their very center. And now, my brethren, if ye were righteous and were willing to hearken to the truth and give heed unto it, that ye might walk uprightly before God, then ye would not murmur because of the truth and say, Thou speakest hard things against us. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did exhort my brethren with all diligence to keep the commandments of the divine. 
And it came to pass that they did humble themselves before the divine, insomuch that I had joy and great hopes of them, that they would walk in the paths of righteousness. Now all these things were said and done, as my father dwelt in the tent of the valley, which he called the mule. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, took one of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also my brethren took of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also Zoram took the eldest daughter of Ishmael to wife. And thus my father had fulfilled all the commandments of the divine which had been given unto him. And I also, Nephi, had been given and blessed of the divine exceedingly. And it came to pass that the voice of the divine spake unto my father by night and commanded him that on the morrow he should take his journey into the wilderness. And it came to pass that as my father arose in the morning and went forth to the tent door, to his great astonishment, he beheld upon the ground a round ball of curious workmanship, and it was of fine brass. And within the ball were two spindles, and one pointed the way whither we should go into the wilderness, like a compass. And it came to pass that we did gather together whoso and whatsoever things we should carry into the wilderness, and all the remainder of the provisions which the divine had given unto us, and we did take every seed of every kind that we might carry into the wilderness. And it came to pass that we did take our tents and depart into the wilderness across the river Laman. And it came to pass that we traveled for the space of four days nearly a south-southeast direction. And we did pitch our tents again, and we did call the name place Shazer. And it came to pass that we did take our bows and our arrows and go forth into the wilderness to slay food for our families. And after we had slain food for our families, we did return again to our families in the wilderness, to the place of Shazer. And we did go forth again into the wilderness, following the same direction, keeping in the most fertile parts of the wilderness, which were in the borders near the Red Sea. And it came to pass that we did travel for the space of many days, slaying food by the way, with our bows and our arrows, and our stones and our slings. And we did follow the directions of the ball which led us in the more fertile parts of the wilderness. And after we had traveled for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents for the space of time, that we might again rest ourselves and obtain food for our families. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, went forth to slay food. Behold, I did break my bow, which was made of fine steel. And after I did break my bow, behold, my brethren were angry with me because of the loss of my bow, for we did obtain no food. It came to pass that we did return without food to our families, and because of being much fatigued, because of their journeying, they did suffer much for the want of food. And it became to pass that Laman and Lemuel and the sons of Ishmael did begin to murmur exceedingly because of their sufferings and afflictions in the wilderness. And also my father began to murmur against the divine his God. Yea, and they were all exceedingly sorrowful, even that they did murmur against the divine. Now it came to pass that I, Nephi, be, having been afflicted with my brethren because of the loss of my bow, and their bows having lost their springs, it began to be exceedingly difficult, yea, insomuch that we could obtain no food. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did speak much unto my brethren, because they had hardened their hearts again, even unto complaining against the divine their God. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make out of wood a bow, and out of a straight stick an arrow. Wherefore I did arm myself with a bow and arrow, with a sling and with stones. And I said unto my father, Whither shall I go to obtain food? And it came to pass that he did inquire of the divine, for they had humbled themselves because of my words. For I did say many things unto them in the energy of my soul. And it came to pass that the voice of the divine came unto my father, and he was truly chastened because of his murmurings against the divine, insomuch that he was brought down into the depths of sorrow. And it came to pass that the voice of the divine said unto him, Look upon the ball, and behold the things which are written. And it came to pass that when my father beheld these things which were written upon the ball, he did fear and tremble exceedingly, and also my brethren and sons of Ishmael and wives. 
And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the pointers which were in the ball, that they did work according to the faith and diligence and heed which did give unto them. And there was also written upon them a new writing, which was plain to be read, which did give understanding concerning why the ways of the divine, and it was written and changed from time to time, according to faith and diligence, which gave in unto it. And thus shall see by small means that divine can bring about great things. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did go forth up unto the top of the mountain, according to the directions which were given upon the ball. And it came to pass that I did slay wild beasts, insomuch that I did obtain food for the families. And it came to pass that I did return to our tents bearing beasts which I had slain. And now when they beheld that I had obtained food, how great was their joy. And it came to pass they did humble themselves before the divine and give thanks. And it came to pass that did travel to take again the journey traveling near the same course as in the beginning and after had traveled for the space of many days, did pitch tents again, that may tarry for the space of time. And it came to pass that Ishmael died and was buried in the place which was called Noham. And it came to pass that the daughters of Ishmael did mourn exceedingly because of the loss of their father and because of the afflictions in the wilderness, and they did murmur again against my father because he had brought them out of the land of Jerusalem, saying, the Father is dead, yea, and we have wandered much in the wilderness, and have suffered much affliction, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and after all these sufferings must perish in the wilderness with hunger. And thus they did murmur against my Father, and also against me, and they were desirous to return again to Jerusalem. And Lamon said unto Lemuel, and also unto the sons of Ishmael, Behold, let us slay our father and also our brother Nephi, or sister Nephi, who has taken upon to be the ruler and teacher, who is the elder brethren. Now sayeth, sayeth unto the divine, has talked with, and also that angels have ministered unto. But behold, know that, lo, that there are lies unto us, and tells these things, and worketh many things by their cunning arts, that that the attempt to deceive the eyes, thinking perhaps that may lead away into some strange wilderness, and after had led astray, had thought to make oneself a king and ruler, that they may with according to the will and pleasure. And after that manner did my brother Lamont stir up their hearts to anger. And it came to pass that the divine was with, yea, even the voice of the divine came and did speak many words unto them, and did chasten them exceedingly. And after they were chastened by the divine voice, they did turn away their anger and did repent of their sins, insomuch that the divine did bless again with food and did not perish. Chapter 17 of 1 Nephi Nephi is commanded to build a ship. The brethren oppose him, exhorts them by recounting the history of God's dealing with Israel. Nephi is filled with the power of God, and the brethren are forbidden to touch him, lest they wither as dried reed, about 592 to 591 B.C. before Christ. And it came to pass that we did again journey into the wilderness, and we did travel nearly eastward from that time forth. And we did travel and wade through much affliction in the wilderness, and the women did bear children in the wilderness. And so great were the blessings of the divine upon, that while did live upon raw meat in the wilderness, the women did give plenty of suck for their children, and were strong, yea, even like unto the men. And they began to bear the journeyings without the murmurings. And thus seen that the commandments of God must be fulfilled, and if it so be that the children of men keep the commandments of God, doth nourish them and strengthen them, and provide means whereby they can accomplish the thing which has commanded them. Wherefore did provide means for while did sojourn the wilderness, and did sojourn for the space for many years, yea, even eight years in the wilderness, and did become able to the land which we call bountiful because of its much fruit, and also wild honey, and all things were prepared of the divine that might not perish, and beheld the sea 
which called Errantium, which being interpreted is many waters, and came to pass that did pitch the tents by the seashore, and notwithstanding had suffered many afflictions and much difficulty. Yea, even so much that cannot write them all, were exceedingly rejoiced when came to the seashore, and we called the place beautiful and bountiful because of its much fruit. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been in the land of the bountiful for the space of many days, the voice of the divine came unto me, saying, Arise, and get thee into the mountain. And it came to pass that I arose and went up into the mountain and cried unto the divine. And it came to pass that the divine spake unto me, saying, Thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee, that I may carry the people across the waters. And I said, Divine, whither shall I go? I may find ore to molten, that I may make tools to construct the ship after the manner which thou hast shown unto me. And it came to pass that the divine told me whither I should go find ore, I might make tools. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make a bellows wherefore to blow the fire of the skins of beasts. And after I had made a bellows, that I might have wherewith to blow the fire, I did smite two stones together, that I might make fire. For the divine had not hitherto suffered that should make such fire, as journeyed in the wilderness. For it is said, I will make thy food become sweet, that ye cook it not. And I will be also unto a light in the wilderness, and I will prepare the way before you. If it so be that ye shall keep my commandments, Wherefore, inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall be led towards the promised land, and ye shall know that it is by me that ye are led. Yea, and the divine said also that after ye had arrived in the promised land, ye shall know that I, the divine, am God, and that I, the divine, did deliver you from destruction, yea, that I did bring you out of the land of Jerusalem. Wherefore, I, Nephi, did strive to keep the commandments of the divine, and I did exhort my brethren of faithfulness and diligence. And it came to pass that I did make tools of ore, which I did molten out of the rock. And when my brethren saw that I was about to build a ship, they began to murmur against me again, saying, She is a fool, for she thinketh that she can build a ship, yea, and also thinketh that she can cross the great waters. And thus my brethren did complain against me again, and were desirous that they might not labor, for they did not believe that I could build a ship, neither would they believe that I was instructed of the divine. And now it came to pass that I, Nephi, was exceedingly sorrowful because of the hardness of their hearts. And now when they saw that I began to be sorrowful, they were glad in their hearts, insomuch that they did rejoice over me, saying, they knew that I could not construct a ship, for I knew that they were lacking in judgment. Wherefore thou cannot accomplish so work a great. And thou art like unto the Father, led away by the foolish imaginations of the heart, yea, hath led out of the land of Jerusalem, and have wandered in the wilderness for these many years, and the women have toiled, being big with child, and they have borne children in the wilderness, and suffered all things, save it were for death. And it took and would have been better that they had died before they came out of Jerusalem than to have suffered the afflictions. Behold, the many years have suffered in the wilderness, which time might have enjoyed the possessions and the land of the inheritance, yea, and might have been happy. And know that the people who were in the land of Jerusalem were of a righteous people, for they kept the statutes and judgments of the divine and all the commandments according to the law of Moses, wherefore known that they are the righteous people, and the father and mother hath judged them, and hath led away, because would hearken unto the words, Yea, and the brother is like unto. And after the manner of the language did my brethren murmur and complain again against me. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake unto them, saying, Do ye believe that the fathers and mothers who were the children of Israel would have been led away out of the hands of Egyptians if they had not hearkened to the words of the divine? 
Yea, do ye suppose that they would have been led out of bondage if the divine had not commanded Moses that he should lead them out of bondage? Now ye know that the children of Israel were in bondage, and ye know they were laden with tasks which were grievous to be borne. Wherefore ye know that it must be a need of a good thing for them that they should be brought out of bondage. Now ye know that Moses was commanded of the divine to do that great work, and ye know that by the words of the waters of the Red Sea were divided hither and thither, and they passed through on dry ground. But ye know that the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea, who were the armies of the Pharaoh. And ye also know that they were fed with manna in the wilderness. Yea, and ye also know that Moses, by the word according to the power of God, which was in, smote the rock, and there came forth water, and the children of Israel might quench their thirst. And notwithstanding, they being led by the divine their God, their Redeemer, going before them, leading them by day, and giving them light unto them by night, and doing all things for them which were expedient for man to receive their hardened hearts, and blinded their minds, and reveled against Moses, and against the true and living God. It came to pass that according to the word did destroy them, and according to the word did and lead them, and according to the word did do all the things for them, and there was not anything done to save it or by the word. And after they had crossed the river, Jordan did make them mighty unto the driving out of the children of the land, yea, unto the scattering of them to destruction. And now do ye suppose that in the children of this land, who were in the land of promise, who were driven out by the fathers and mothers, do ye suppose that they were righteous? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Do ye suppose that the fathers and mothers would have been more choice than if they had been righteous? I say again unto you, Nay. Behold, the divine esteemeth all flesh in one that is righteous and favored of the divine. But behold, this people had rejected every word of God, and they were ripe in iniquity, and the fullness of the wrath of God was upon them, and the divine did curse the land against them and bless it unto the fathers and mothers, yea, did curse it against them unto their own destruction, and did bless it unto the fathers and mothers unto their obtaining power over it. Behold, the divine hath created the earth that it shall be and should be inhabited, and hath created children that they should possess it, and hath raised up a righteous nation and destroyeth the nations of the wicked and leadeth away the righteous to the precious lands, and the wicked has been destroyed, and curseth unto them for the rest of their days. Ruleth in the highest of the heavens, for it is the throne, and the earth the footstool, and loveth those who will have given to be their God. Behold, had loved the fathers and mothers, and had covenanted with them, Yea, even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and remembered the covenants which had made, wherefore did bring them out of the land of Egypt, and did straighten them in the wilderness with the rod, for they hardened their hearts, even as ye have, and the divine straightened them because of their iniquity, had sent fiery flying serpents among them, and after they were bitten, were prepared a way that they might be healed. And the labor which they had performed was to look because of the simpleness of the way or the easiness of it. There were so many who had perished, and they did harden their hearts from time to time, and they did revile against Moses and also against God. Nevertheless, ye know that they were led forth by the matchless power into the land of promise. And now, after all these things, the time has come that they have become wicked cherubim, yea, nearly unto ripeness. And I know not, but they are at this day about to be destroyed. For I know that the day must surely come that they must be destroyed, save a few only who shall be led away into captivity. Wherefore the divine commanded 
that should depart into the wilderness, and the Jews also sought to take away my father's life. And yea, ye also sought to take away the life, wherefore ye are murderers in your hearts, and ye are like unto them. Ye are swift to do iniquity, but slow to remember the divine your God. Ye have seen an angel and spake unto you. Yea, ye have heard the voice from time to time, and hath spoken unto you in a still, small voice. But ye were past feeling that ye could not feel the words, wherefore hath spoken unto you like unto the voice of thunder, which did cause the earth to shake as if it were to divide asunder. And ye also know that by the power of Almighty Word can cause the earth that it shall pass away. Yea, and ye know that by the Word can cause the rough places to be made smooth, and the smooth places shall be broken up. Oh, then why is it that ye can be so hard in your hearts? Behold, my soul is rent with anguish because of you, and my heart is pained. I fear lest ye shall be cast off forever, cherubim. For behold, I am full of the Spirit of God, insomuch my frame has all that strength. And now it came to pass, when I had spoken these words, those cherubim were angry with me, and were desirous to throw me into the depths of the sea. And as they came forth to lay their hands upon me, I spake unto them, saying, In the name of the Almighty God, I command that ye touch me not, for I am filled with the power of God, even unto the consuming of my flesh. And whoso shall lay hands upon me shall wither even as a dried reed, and he shall be not the power of God for God shall smite. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said unto them that they should murmur no more against the divine, neither should they withhold their labor from me, for God has commanded that I should build a ship. And I had said unto them, if God had commanded to do all the things, I could do them. If should command that I should say unto this water, Be thou earth, it should be earth. And if I should say it, it would be done. And if now the divine had such great power and has wrought so many miracles among the children of men, how is it that cannot instruct me that I should build a ship? And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said many things unto my brethren, insomuch that they were confounded and could not contend against me. Neither durst they lay their hands upon me, nor touch me with their fingers, even for the space of many days. Now they durst not do this, lest they should wither before me so powerful the Spirit of God, and thus it has wrought upon them. And it has came to pass that the divine said unto me, Stretch forth thine hand against unto my brethren, and they shall not wither before me. But I will shock them, saith the divine, and this I will do, that they may know I am the divine their God. And it came to pass that I stretched forth my hand unto my brethren, and they did not wither before me. But the divine did shake them, even according to the word which had been spoken. And now they said, We know of a surety that the divine is with thee, for we know that it is the power of the divine that has shaken ye. And they fell down before me and were about to worship me, but I would not suffer them, saying, I am thy brother, sister, yea, even thy younger. Wherefore, worship the divine thy God, and honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the divine thy God shall give thee. And if you take into consideration, if there were individuals who did not want to believe the possibilities of the reality that, yes, what I created, the underwater travel system, is feasible.
been for a while. I mean, I did draw it up. I tried explaining it several times over. Then again, I had to get past the aspects of people not believing me that I had landed where I had landed. You know, lower than that portion. And surfaced. And obviously, I'm alive. Today is the 29th of April, 2020. That was in August of 2009. I'm still here. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel, Reverend Me Ling. Though I am Reverend Me Ling, also known as Reverend Susan Me Ling, Susan Me Ling, Lady Dory Bell, a few other names. You guys have a good one. Share, like, and subscribe. Go to my website. Have a good one.